Hey guys, Silver Skull Gamer here again, getting back in business. Uh, this is a, it's not really an unboxing anymore, but more of a initial review on the Chapter House Iconoclast kit for your Games Workshop Land Raider. Uh, kind of turns it into the Mark, uh, was it Mark 2B? I think that Forge World has is kind of an equivalent type kit. Um, uh, kind of show you what it looked like coming out of the box. Uh, you can see that the pieces were warped. Uh, definitely some warpage going on. In fact, you can kind of see this door right here still. A little warped. But uh, to fix that, I basically used um, some water and then a little Tupperware container, put it in the microwave about 90 seconds, put the pieces in. You know, it, it takes some uh, trial and error with the water, obviously. Um, you know, learning how to do that and not messing up the pieces. Um, but got pretty good results. Um, one thing that you're going to want to do is bust out your Land Raider or the kit. Um, if you haven't assembled the Land Raider, sorry about that. If you haven't assembled the Land Raider yet, you're at least want going to want to um, get your outside track piece because that's what you're going to use to level out the uh, these pieces. But um, let's just go over the parts you do get. So you get two. Basically, these are rhino-sized doors. Um, for your back hatches and they're very nice uh, good cast, they got little keypads on them uh, I did have a little little piece break off right here um, I'm not even sure I'm actually going to be using these doors we'll see uh, I like the white resin I think a little better okay so you get those doors to go there, or actually that's upside down. And then you get these two. Um, obviously I have different batches going on. Overall, the casting is pretty good. There's really not much I had to do. Um, you can see I think I had a little, maybe a little bubble here, so there's a little liquid green stuff scraped in. But um, And here you can see on the desk that they're fairly this one's fairly flush now this one's still a little warped but um, well we'll talk about that but so uh, you have this is nice so you get this this land raider sized cutout helps you basically align the piece to the side of the land raider and basically just locks into the side and if you are actually interior, if you do the inside of your land raider, then you have some detail there instead of just a blank space. So you get your two sides. Now you can see I went a little crazy with the Titchy Train polystyrene rivets, um, but there's actually quite a bit of the regular rivets. As you can see, the pattern I went a little more. Well, maybe not. I mean, it's a little heavier. Uh, a little denser than the actual Land Raider itself, but that's okay. So, um, oh, let me put a picture up real quick of the stock, what it looks like from Chapter House. It's got these big flat, like washer style rivets. Didn't really match the aesthetic of the Land Raider, so I scraped those off, went crazy with the uh, Titchy Train rivets. I actually ended up using up almost my whole stock of this size rivet, which I think is a. Uh, 0 0.04 or 0 0.045 so you get those, you get those two rhino doors you get your little cyl cylindrical turrets basically um, and then you get the bottom plates that will match up here to lock in your turret or sponson, sorry lock in your sponson um, and then that finishes out the side pieces then you get your center piece 
uh, top plate and now here I used uh, actually hex rivets because one I ran out of the other ones and then I thought maybe this was a little heavier this would be heavier armor you know so it would require sturdier uh, rivets overall casting once again pretty clean as you can see I uh, I did fill in a little bit of stuff there this isn't so warped I didn't uh, well not this piece we'll see how it is when I actually go to put it together I did have to trim here um, you can kind of see where the resin comes out there on this edge and I trim that back uh, this piece was warped tried to straighten that out but it's a little difficult because you have these bridges on the bottom that help put it in place so it's still a little warped but not too bad well it probably won't look so bad when everything's painted up but hopefully uh, you get two of these I've accidentally packed one away with another kit but you get two of these little uh, sensors I'm probably just going to use one because I don't really know where you'd fit two of them um, and one of the pictures on the website shows it like that so that makes sense to me so that's probably what I'll do uh, put that there and that's it for this kit so uh, now let's talk about you know how I the things you gotta watch out for when you use the water obviously these are big chunks you got a lot of solid you know basically this whole the back half of it's a solid chunk of resin um, so to move that you need to heat it up fairly well the problem is you have to be careful like um, let's demonstrate here so you heat it up and then you place it on here it's warped so you start pressing it down flat against this but if it gets so soft you'll actually press this in so that this is curved down you actually warp the entire piece so you have to be careful and uh, I kinda messed that up and then had to go back and sort of correct my mistakes um, and basically you know just just get this piece down flush also uh, you have to do some shaving here uh, I believe there's these little rivets at the bottom I took those out just so they wouldn't get in the way and I think that's it yeah so the uh, the crux terminatus uh, it's not really a crux terminatus but the little cross and skull and the rivets on the bottom just go ahead and take those off and then you know heat it up put it on here press it down flat um, this would honestly be a better place to press down because that's already uh, indented and you're not going to see it so if you start pressing down here you'll warp this it'll come down this will bend down and uh, you just got to be oops sorry about that you just got to be a little careful with these big pieces you don't want to ruin the whole thing heat it up too much get it too soft uh, and also I would recommend well I'm going to especially this piece oh okay so I did have a bit of an issue with this one obviously I had to shave it and left some holes because there was bubbles behind um, where I shaved it off and so I had to fill that up but it's a nice flat surface so that's not such a big deal because this is where the uh, this is where the sprue comes off where you clip it off um, I guess that's pretty much it. Oh, no, it's not. All right. So, you know, the warped resin's not that big of a deal. And I was saying what I was planning on doing is actually maybe pinning these to the side. Because, I mean, that's a pretty, pretty big uh, chunk to just hang off the side. So I may figure out a way to pin them. Although this, this, this door locking in is kind of nice. So maybe that'll provide enough resistance from it just falling down we'll see how that goes so the other issue is let's get this this the right side nope there we go alright so here's your bottom bottom plate right you can already tell that's come on camera alright let me fix the zoom there we go okay 
get in my own light here. Okay. So that's angled up. Uh, thicker part, the top, thin parts, the bottom. The holes aren't real clean. You can see that hole is kind of waller, wallered out, as we say, down here in the south. Uh, match that up. Okay. So this side <clears throat> matches up fairly well. It's actually the cylinder seems actually a bit too long. Um, you can see the curvature here. This isn't really straight. But this is kind of tight. There's a little resistance there. It just doesn't spin around crazy. Let's go to the other side. Okay. I'm keeping the bottom in line with the rest of it. Okay, so that's that's straight, not angled up to make it tight. If I want to keep it level, look how much of a gap there is. All right. It's it's barely in the sockets. In fact, I think it just came out of the top socket. So that's kind of a problem. Um, obviously, you can't see the top so I will add material or something here in the top where it's not as easily seen as the bottom right and that should fix that but kinda sucks that it doesn't fit um, other than that so went over how it came out of the box showed you a couple pictures talked about using the hot water the rivets um, not a, as you can see there wasn't a lot of green stuff on these pieces just a few bits here and there but overall um, turned out came pretty clean from the uh, factory as you could say I'm looking forward to using it because the uh, Forge World used to sell the Mark II B conversion kit by itself now you have to buy the whole damn land raider and everything and that's just too much money and uh i got this land raider for free anyway well, for like 20 bucks so um yeah looking forward to using it so stay tuned and next few weeks for part two or i'll actually put it together and we'll talk about how it goes together and see how well that goes so thanks for watching, um, thanks for subscribing, all the new sub subscribers, uh, please thumbs up, comment, let me know how you like you know, the uh, video, and I'll see you guys next time.